welcome everyone to Junior Grand Prix week number two here in Lintz. Uh, the last chance to earn valuable points towards the Junior Grand Prix Final. For others, it's another opportunity to gain valuable experience in their figure skating journey. Now we start today's action with the men's short program, 29 entries from 26 nations and a chance for Adam Hagera of Slovakia to secure a spot in the Junior Grand Prix Final after winning week two in Linz. Another interesting story is the two brothers from Hungary competing against each other here at home, their training facility, 19-year-old Alexander Vlasenko and 16-year-old Alexei Vlasenko will continue their friendly family competition. So the stage is set. The Junior Men's Short Program starts right now. Welcome everyone to Budapest, Hungary as we do a flyover of the facility. The Vlasas Arena, Ice Arena. We are about 25 minutes outside of downtown Budapest. A beautiful wooded area, lots of walking paths, beautiful homes as well. Welcome live inside the arena here. I'm your host, Ted Barton. Mark Hanruddy, you're online, are you? I am indeed, Ted. I am indeed. And it looks like you're in a really beautiful arena. It looks really impressive. Yeah, it's really nice. Just a couple uh, updates. Mark, actually, a number of updates mm -hmm. here. Number one is when I mentioned the opening about Alexander and Alexei. Alexei, 16 years old, he had to withdraw as we take a look at the officials for this event. He had to withdraw due to illness, so he will not be competing. It's very upsetting for him. I know we wish him the very best to, uh, in his recovery because uh, I know it's, 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 you know, he's here at home up against his brother, would love to compete, but he just yeah. cannot uh, do that. And then a couple other things here. We actually have four skaters that did not receive their skates. Two women and two men uh, from Estonia and from Finland. So we do not know at this point who's going to actually be able to compete because they did try to skate in some of somebody else's skates that didn't work somebody went bought new boots that did work so it's going to be a changing scenario as we move along here and uh so lots of stories on that front we in the men's short program we do have nine triple axle attempts in the short so that'll be interesting to see whether that continues as well ah oh, it's a great intel there that definitely showcases why it's so valuable to be on site yeah, like this just, you know, just, I would say about 15 minutes ago, the officials from the ISU came in and said, yeah, we've got four skaters with no skates, and uh, one did buy a new pair. I don't even know how you skate a new pair that quickly without breaking them down. But, uh... Actually, her coach, actually, Martina Shershevar, she had been communicating with them, trying to get some intel, and she, you know, she gave me all sorts of wonderful intel, and then she said, just a little update. Now, as you say, we have no skates, and the mum has gone and bought some, they borrowed a dress, and I just think how, we've talked about the experiences for the Junior Grand Prix, that is one heck of an experience already, and let's hope that they can manage. That's for sure. Jaeger Matsenko from Estonia, he's going to skate in Alexei Vlashenko's skates. Alexei, wow. of course, is sick, so he can't skate, so Jaeger is going to take his skates and see if that works. And he is one of those nine that have a triple axle plan with the short program. Gee, I don't know if you could do a triple axle and someone else escapes that quickly. So we'll say, Amazing. wait and see what happens with that. And then um, uh, we have our two, Yusolo from Finland. He may have to withdraw. He did try to skate in someone else's skates, but it really did not work. So he might be a withdrawal, but we will not know until we get to him in the start order. Oh, gosh. Been a busy Real morning. Go to the skaters. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Imagine all the preparation and time, and then to have that happen to you, so much out of your control. But 
Yeah. Just open seat. So disappointing for the skaters that, you know, I can understand Alexei Lushenko, of course, he's, he's ill. He's here at home. Okay, you, that happens. But to not have your skates arrive, that also happens periodically. But generally speaking, you get them in time. But the travel schedule, I guess, from Helsinki to was all disrupted. They had to go to different cities. And so, you know, what that means, I mean, um, the chances of your skates getting lost are greater when you're traveling around in different cities, that's for sure. And for, I suppose for those then that are watching the streaming service here and aren't as familiar with the sport the way that those that have been involved and competed, for them it's important to note that to skate in somebody else's skates or to skate in new skates, most skaters will spend, well, it's variable, but maybe a week or so at least getting comfortable with a new pair of boots and blades, at least. So to do it in a couple of days, whew. Yeah, it's just, uh, it's unheard of to be able to go and skate in somebody else's skates to the level that you had trained to present at the competition. So you might be able to skate in them, but certainly not to the highest level. We'll see what happens. And as you mentioned, it is another experience to be gained here uh, for these young skaters. And, and talking about Lashenko, who's so unfortunately unable to skate, part of me thinks, oh, well, you know, there's a blessing insofar as you know, he hasn't traveled, he hasn't spent the expense of, of getting in a flight to another nation, but then equally the flip side of that is how wonderful it would have been for him to skate in a home event. So there's kind of no, <laughs> no real pro to be taken. Just yeah, send was, sympathies. I was talking to his mom. His mom is a volunteer here, just such a wonderful, classy lady. And um, she never even mentioned that her two boys were skating. And uh, Alexander gave me a ride to the rink, and I didn't recognize him. Oh, I said, you're a skater. So yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh. Then he told me the story about competing with his brother at that time. He had not withdrawn. So, you know, kind of a friendly family rivalry here at home, which has been a lot of fun, but unfortunately that won't happen. It seems, Ted, and all the skaters that have been researching, so many of them have siblings that skate, and then consequently that seems to push, obviously, for the Vlashenko brothers. They're both competing internationally very successfully with full set of triples. It seems to be just a recurring theme that there the families a, push each other. There is Alexander right there. He will skate last in this group. And uh, he does have a triple axle planned, at least. We'll see. And if we put that on the planned program, she will see whether it happens in the program, of course. Well, it's a beautiful facility here. They have two arenas. The second arena is three degrees Celsius. Okay, now that is cold. I walked in that <laughs> arena, and it's like a meat locker, and uh, <laughs> it's it's really cold. This rink is chilly, on the big rink, but the practice rink is very very cold. It'll be very hard to train for a long period of time in that rink because you you know muscles get tight. And it'd be a lot easier to pull them or have an accident. But they don't train that much in that uh, cold rink. They do mostly train here in the main rink according to Alexander, so that's that's lucky. And they have a beautiful gym as well, two-story gym. And uh, so it's a really wonderful facility outside of Budapest, just about 25 minutes outside of downtown and close to the Aqua Hotel Park, which is where we're staying at. It has probably 15 pools, right? So Wow. <laughs> yeah, and lots of walking paths. It's just a beautiful area. As they clear the ice and we get started on a very long day, it's over 12 hours of coverage. Are you ready? <laughs> I'm ready. Okay. Well, here we go. We get started right now. Our first skater comes from France, 16-year-old Jean Medard. He's coached by Brian Jobert, former world champion. Personal best score in the short program, 56.81. That was last season in Courchevel. He will skate to love as a bitch by two feet.
I love the finish in the choreography for Jean Mida from France, the first of 125 skaters competing at this junior Grand Prix in Budapest. And he'd be disappointed, Ted, with that fall in the Triple Oaks, I'm sure. Yeah. Absolutely. And uh, Mark, I have to say that I have completely failed you in the first skater because I'm here watching it and I had forgot to push the buttons for the replays. So, ah! <laughs> so we, we won't have any replays on Jean. Uh, my apologies. Oh, my gosh. Two sure weeks away from the, from the controls, you know, I, I forgot. <laughs> so Making me feel good. better when it comes to my turn. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, next week we'll be side by side in, in Gdansk. We see uh, Je uh, Brian Gilbert, coach of Jean. It's Brian's birthday yesterday, so congratulations to Brian on his birthday. And interestingly, Ted, when I reached out to Brian, I said, is there anything you would like us to mention about Jean? And Brian just said, just stay the same with Ted like that. And he acknowledged that we find good things to say about each skater. And he said how important it is for them. Now, Brian Joubert is the 2007 world champion. He's a man who's experienced the whole gamut of skating, and he's acknowledging how important it is and valuable for the skaters to hear the positives. Now, Jean, great skater, loved the choice of choreography, loved the style, and if he's in the hands of a coach that recognizes the importance of the holistic approach and the positive information, then his skating career will be so positive. Yeah, it really is so important. We can't you can't emphasize that enough because it, life is difficult as it is. And when I was thinking about, uh, somebody was asking me about uh, our approach and I was telling them about your story about afraid to even look at, you know, anything on TV because they were so brutal yep. in those days. So you have to be honest, but you have to be fair as well. 52.11 for Jean Medard from France, first skater out in this competition. Okay, I'm getting ready for button pushes <laughs> on the ready. replays. Okay, sorry about that. Hundred, you got many, many more to go. So oh, I know. Okay, and there is a look at our next skater, and he comes from Kazakhstan, Nikita Krivosheyev. First junior Grand Prix in se pre uh, first junior Grand Prix season, second event this fall, coming 23rd in Istanbul. 45.12 personal best. He'll skate to. I'll never forget you.
the 17 year old from Kazakhstan, Nikita Kiboshiev. And I was really so hopeful for Nikita. He landed the Lutz, which he struggled in, and his first junior Grand Prix this season in Istanbul, but unfortunately, Came and fell apart a little bit with the double axle attempt. Well, it's a beautiful edge work. We'll see that in the replays. Mm. I did get that. Uh, beautiful <laughs> edge work going into the axle. It looks set up, and then that left takeoff edge just slipped out from underneath him. You see his step out. This is just the triple flip combo. And there's the triple S hands over the head. That was well done. Mm. And here's a lot of this edge work with brackets. Calorie counter there three turn all on one foot he gets set up for an easy double axle but we'll watch the left foot just slips out right there yeah he... yeah and loses all the points on that of course yeah the mistake that he made in Istanbul was on the first two jumping passes so I thought he would be en route to having a much more favorable score but we'll see comparison will be for the skaters as is always the case as to the comparison between the levels and the spins and he had a three a four and a two at the last assignment this time a uh, four a three and a two just different different levels and different spins so still struggling just to get consistency on the features within the three spins in the short program yeah at 45.12 personal best that's also his season's best we have two scores to go by because quite often they have, will have a personal best from last season but only a lower season's best but in this case it is the same as he waits for his scores here and knows that that axle was pretty costly. He gets a zero on that, of course, with a step sequence level two, change camel spin three, flying suspend level two, so missing some features on those spins as well. It's a nice big kiss and cry backdrop, okay? Yeah, I, I love the, the symbol as well, so each of the events has their own symbol, and like what they've done here in Budapest. Looks good. Let's take a look at the scores. Short program score for Nikita. Season's best, 46.63. So even with a mistake, at least he's up that a little bit. And that'll put him currently into second place. And there is our next competitor. Coming from Sweden, 17-year-old Hugo Bostet, first junior Grand Prix season, second event, placing 16th in Linz week number two, fourth in junior at Swedish Nationals. He has a short program top score of 51.57, earning that in Linz earlier this fall. Skating to It's a Man's 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 World by James Brown.
Another 17-year-old, this time from Sweden, Hugo Barstedt. And fascinating story, Ted. Hugo was explaining that the coaching staff he has, the Mayerov family, moved to his club two years ago. And in one and a half years, this is a skater went from having no double axle to landing all triples in the triple triples. And you can really see the influence of Alexander Mayerov, both senior and junior, on the skater. Yeah, it's so important to be skating with people at a higher level as we see the triple flip, triple toe loop, landing on a quarter to step out. Here's the triple flip. Oh, I guess it's a triple out, sorry, pardon me. And this is the triple flip here, it's a little bit forward. And I wanted to show this because this is always a bit of a struggle for a young junior men is getting that camel position, that three leg above mm -hmm. the hip. A bit of a struggle there, it just needs to get some more flexibility in the hips. A little bit better in the back camel. And it's interesting that he, he didn't get his combo spin called in the last event, and he's got the V symbol on it again here. So there's a big factor for that, as you say so rightly, that the camel for the boys can have a big impact on the levels for the spin. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, it's hard as you're working on jumps because skaters love to jump. You think, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, spins, yeah. I know they have value. I get it. But when you start <laughs> losing all the value in three spins, it adds up to quite a bit. Yeah. And you can obviously tell from what he said over the last 18 months, he's done some amazing stuff with his technical content in the jumping department. And now he's obviously got a huge jump technique. So now that's in the bag. He'll obviously be eager for Triple Axel to be added to his repertoire, but maybe some time devotion yeah. to the flexibility yeah. as well. Yeah, and he, you know, he has, he's, he's strong. This is no question of that. The technique is starting to come together. And then it's, he's going to find no limitations of this. There's lots of details to be worked on, as we talked about, the flexibility, turned out toe, stretch, free leg, straight posture, all that kind of stuff. That'll come in time. But this young man is on the cusp of making a breakthrough. It's not here yet in competition, but he's having good coaching and uh, yeah, hopefully it'll continue to develop as we've seen here just in the last little while. And you're so right, Ted. As a generalization, and this doesn't stand for all, maybe more so even than the women, the boys just love to jump. And you can see that in him. You can see, yeah. obviously, he loves to really, I mean, this guy jumps. He doesn't just take off, he no. flies. Yeah. It's a thrill and, and uh, it's a wonderful mm. feeling when you launch yourself into the air and it comes together <laughs> and you land and glide. That's just a thrill. And so you want that thrill all the time. You don't want to sit there in a spin, yeah. try to get your leg up, get it in a spin. <laughs> I mean, who wants to do that, right? So nah. that's what, unfortunately, skaters, you have to do that if you want to be really good. 50.83 <laughs> for Hugo. And that'll put him currently into second place. And there is our next competitor. He comes from the Republic of Korea, Kyung Yum Kim, 17 years old, second Junior Grand Prix season, second event this fall, coming second in Linz, a lot of twos in there, six in the World Juniors last year, in Korean senior silver medalist, 73.45 person best. He's skating to music by John Mills. Thank you. 
We've had four skaters, four 17-year-olds, but Korea Hyun Young Kim, definitely the most experienced and highest ranked, and he's absolutely lived up to the expectation that an amazingly clean skate early on in the competition. Yeah, there was the triple axel number one out of nine, planned at least in the short program here, and successfully done, beautifully done. As we take a look at some of the elements, and just right off the top of the program, good deep edges and soft knees. And watch this triple axel, arms and free leg back, snaps straight up off the end of the edge, and landing looks on the quarter. No, it's not on the quarter, it's under rotated actually in the judging system. But still, the mechanics of that jump, really nicely done. Triple flip, up, lifts up higher on the triple toe loop. Totally clear there. And the triple lots a little bit later in the program. Nicely done. And Hyung Yong is the second Korean man to land a quad in juniors, and that he did not Linz, and the first was Yoon Wan Cha, who's the current and reigning world senior silver medalist. So he's putting himself in a good line of Korean men, and I'm sure he wants to follow in Cha's footsteps and I remember, consistency here. I remember seeing Jun Wan Cha first time in Yokohama, Japan in 2017. And he was just a little guy, and he was just unbelievable. I think that's where he actually did his quads. And yeah, um, yeah he was amazing. And his journey started right then, right there. So just saw Ted on the judges, what's happening with the inputs that, as you pointed out, the triple axle being under rotated, that had a couple of points knocked off. So the score may be short of the yes. season's best of 73. Yeah, 70, yeah, season best 73.45. So that under rotation is gonna cost him just a little bit. That one element is in at a 5.39 where it would have been a 6.4. Uh, so, okay, it gets too deep down the math thing, but anyways. <laughs> <laughs> but and it I does. suppose when you're looking at this level, it's that those small implications which these skaters will be so attuned to and so conscious of. Absolutely. It, they, it makes a difference. Those little details. 72.61, that's just a little bit shy of a season's best. That'll put Hyun Yom Kim of Korea Currently in the first place. They look pretty happy with that score. So they should be. Good strong skate again. In junior Grand Prix number two for this young man. Well, our next competitor, there he is. 19-year-old Alexander Vlashenko, his brother probably watching at home or is maybe even in the building. We wish him the best in his recovery. Second junior Grand Prix season, 21st at Junior Worlds last year. 12th in week two in Linz, Austria, 65.20, his personal best. Looking to top that here, right now, at home.
first skater to compete for the home nation, Alexander Vlasenko. And ah, oh, what a shame, Ted. And I have all the more respect and admiration for hearing that he and his family are here facilitating this event, being part of the organizing committee, supporting everybody, supporting the volunteers. Maybe that's just been consuming a bit too much of his energy. Well, I don't know. He, he started that program really well with a beautiful triple mm -hmm. axle. There it is. Look at that. Solid. All the way around with a plus 1.03 GOE. So that's great. Comes back down the ice. No problem with the triple Lutz. He's on top of his game right now. Nice. But he got a little cautious on this flip, hoping to get this program clean. Extra little weight there. This is the double. Gets up into the triple. Under rotated, has to take fall. See how he hung his head getting up? So mm. frustrated with that because he had a really good program going. And then just right here, just a little bit of a loss of balance oh, yeah. in the step sequence there. And so that's just really unfortunate. Really a nice young man and and uh, and a good skater and a great skate mm. going until that last jump element. And again, it confirms that all the skaters have different perspectives. So Alexander, he's competed at World and European Senior Championships, and he's qualified at Europeans for the free skate, so has a different maybe perspective and skill of aspirations coming in. So that skate will have been a bit of a challenge, but he proudly represented he and his brother as his coach, Zabok Svidrai, joins him. Yeah, and I think that that was a good start to the program. He gets that mm. second, he gets the jump combination in there nice and clean. He's got a big score. Still some work to do with posture and some of the details. Good skater, good jumper. Um, let's see the spins in here. Two for the change camel spin, four for the change combo spin, and wow, zero Nothing. for the flying set. Mm, that's unfortunate. And that's, I wonder when the score comes up, knowing that he's had a season's best of 64, that's what's going to then be confusing. Yeah. Because he's going to think, okay, I missed the triple flip and I had the fall, but surely it shouldn't be that low. So. That's when you'll have to scrutinize what's happened in regards to that yeah. flying set. Yeah, exactly. And they're still taking a look at the step sequence currently in at level three. Interesting, at the last event, Teddy had an edge call on the triple loops, and I thought the triple loops here had a gorgeous running edge on the landing. Unfortunately, no edge call there. So that element, much better than the last time. Yep. But obviously then the wobbles in the step sequence forced the judges to go down on the GOE. So lots of lots of changes, lots of differences. And that's, you know, still early in the season for a skater that's done Worlds and Europeans. He's got a long season ahead of him. Oh yeah, totally. And you know, not every competition is the critical one. They're all development, if you will, until you get to your Europeans or perhaps the World Championships. Let's take a look at the scores for Alexander Voschenko, 52.57. And that'll put him currently in second place. Much better skated than those scores. Just had a bit of a challenge today in that fine sit spin and jump combination. Yeah. Well, next group taking to the ice for their six minute warm up. Lovely to see some of the warm up exercises from Haro Kakiuchi just working the back chalk on the counter. Oh, sorry, that's Haro Kakiuchi. Nice just to see the, the work on the skating skills from some of the skaters. Some so quick to immediately set up, up into the jumping passes, and some just using the opportunity to get the knees and ankles going. Well, yeah, I suppose everybody's a little bit different, but I would say that if you watch carefully the practice sessions and the warm ups, that the Korean and Japanese skaters spend an awful lot of time on the edge work, just getting the stability. Because once that stability is there in the edges, you feel the ice, then when you go to execute the jumps, you're only in the air for like, you know, 0 0.6 seconds. So, you know, get the skating, get yourself comfortable in skating skills. So important and you know that they do a lot of time uh, just on skating skills itself. So important. And I suppose knowing, of course, on the Junior Grand Prix that some of the planned program content will be vastly different between the, the skaters, but many of the ones towards the top end, top 10, tend to have similar uh, technical planned program content. And so then the skating skills 
and consequently the grades of execution have such a big impact on the result. Absolutely, and you know, when you start to look at what skaters love to do, jump, as we saw that nice little <laughs> axle there, um, they spend a lot of time on that. And because you think you can skate when you're young, you say, well, what are you talking about? I can skate, I have edges, you know, I get around. But you don't understand that where you're at in skating skills can be so much better, but it takes so much more time. So, you know, you do what you like to do most, uh, which is probably jump, and some people need to spin, and you don't spend as much time on skating skills. So important. Best skaters in the world are the best skaters for a reason. Not necessarily the best jumpers, maybe, but best skaters. Yeah, the all-rounder package. And interestingly, Ted, I was, for my sins, coaching ice hockey players last night, and interestingly, you know, the techniques of ice skating, the fundamental biomechanics of good flow and good glide, which is pretty much the same across Okay. Both disciplines. Maybe less aesthetically pleasing. For Wait up. Course. Let's back up here for a second. Did you say you're coaching your son's hockey team? I know. What's that all about? Who am I? Have, have you ever I held a hockey stick in your hands? Only very recently. <laughs> Actually, it's got to be. <laughs> oh, my God. Did you hold it the right way? I mean. <laughs> well, I, did, I said I would do skating skills, so I didn't have to touch the stick and embarrass myself in front of all these youngsters. Well, you know, so important. A lot of uh, my daughter actually teaches uh, hockey teams to skate as oh, well. Wow. So many figure skaters are um, skating coaches for hockey teams. Uh, when we talk about the NHL, uh, Barbara Underhill, a former world champion in 1984, oh. with Paul Martini, she coached the Toronto Maple Leafs and the New York Rangers wow. uh, skills. David Pelche, Olympic champion 2000, 2002, he uh, teaches skating skills to the Edmonton Oilers. Um, wow. So, yeah, so there is a number, uh, there's many more uh, lists that goes on that figure skaters have that cornered that, not cornered that market, but certainly have a big footprint in that market of skating skills for hockey players. I was thinking of Oh, the Rick, Victor Olympic. Kratz. Victor Kratz. Oh, really? The dancer, he was uh, in Finland coaching most of the teams, or a number wow. of the teams there. Also coaches a great program in um, in Vancouver now. So, yeah, so there's more and more. I, I was thinking of Charlie White, the Olympic ice dance champion, who I remember was competing. I think he did at one point, competing as an ice dancer with his soon-to-become Olympic champion ice dance partner, Merrill Davis, competing juniors and singles, and competing with a pretty high-level hockey team as well. So interesting to see how it doesn't necessarily they're not as different as maybe people expect uh charlie white is here uh with his dance team oh wow and cool. i saw him in montreal and i asked him we had a nice conversation i said charlie you know now that you're coaching you know what sort of made you get into that and he wanted to he said we really wanted to try this you know we have a passion for the sport obviously and we hadn't really done that and i said so what do you think is it harder than you thought and he said this is one million times harder than I wow. ever thought it would be. I had no idea how difficult or how hard it is to coach because there's so many aspects. The teaching of skating is the easy part. It's, as we've often sure. talked about, is working with the people. So it was really interesting. Such a nice young man. Okay, okay. he may not be that young, but for me, he's young. Okay. <laughs> he's such yeah. a nice young man. So classy and uh, wonderful mm. to chat with. And, uh, I love when we have advocates for the sport that are ambassadors that are good humans. And I, I so good to see wholesome people in a sport, which you know, it's, it, it is a sport which can be so competitive and with anything competitive, it can be cutthroat, but he seems to sing the praises of good humanity as well. Yeah, you know, it's interesting also, Mark, seeing this generational change, if you will, between how people were taught one way, mm -hmm. and I don't mean technically, in school, uh, in sport, and now the standards of society have changed to be, you know, because it used to be very disciplinary, very tough on, on, on young people. And now there's a more positive approach that's being encouraged and, and uh, followed for the most part. And we're seeing, I think, people understand the growth of the person is equally as important of the growth of the skate, of the athlete. And they go hand in hand. And we see coaches spending more time in doing Not everyone, but we certainly see a lot more now working both sides of the fence on that one, if you will. And here we go. Too true. Group number two. In the first event, in a long day of competition, it'll be fun <laughs> all day long. And there's 
Nice smile. There we go. 17-year-old Haru Kikuchi. Second Junior Grand Prix season, second event this year. Seventh in Linz in week two. 69.39 personal best in the short program. And he will skate to Caruso. Haru Kakuchi from Japan showing some serious consistency across both of his assignments. Fourth in the short program in Linz in Austria. And again, showcasing another clean skate to put himself in contention. Beautiful held landings on that double axle and the triple lots off the top of the program. You'll see that he decided to, rather than do a twizzle or do some sort of step out of it, just hold the landing as we watch here. Double axle, just glide. Keep that speed moving, beautifully done. Same thing on the lats here, a little bit shorter perhaps. Establishes the landing, moves his arms. You can see traveling three turns. Look at that beautiful camel position, change of edge right there, forward outside, that's a feature. There's the triple flip, no problem, but up into the triple toe loop. Twizzle there. We want to keep a little bit more speed carrying out of that triple toe loop. We want to have those jump combinations cover more ice. I thought in here, you could see nice sliding move. It's a Nice work in the step sequence, which is in at a level three. So that's good. We don't often see level four step sequence in the juniors. Level three is generally the highest. Sometimes you'll get a level four. But the overall quality of this young man, really, at a very high level. Yes, and he said that he does focus on the steps and spins, and he aspires to be like his hero, Daisuke Takahashi, and some of that influence in a very different style for the free skate. But fascinating that Haru's mom put him into skating at the age of three because she thought he was shy, and yet look how confidently yeah. he moves now. Well, not so shy anymore. 
Let's take a look at the score, 66.95 for Haru Kikuchi from Japan. That'll put him in second place so far in the competition. Here's a look at your top five on the leaderboard. And now our next competitor was the winner in week number two in Linz, Austria, 17-year-old Adam Hagara. First time for a Soviet Slovakian skater to win Junior Grand Prix in many years. Adam was also 14th in World Juniors, 23rd in Senior Worlds last year, 74.01 personal best in Linz in the short program. Looking to keep that consistency and that brilliant performance he delivered in Linz together here in Budapest. He'll skate to Freedom by Farrah Williams. Another 17-year-old, Adam Hagara, and he's just looking without question or doubt that that would be another clean skate. Does he ever have a zone? Like, he just mm. doesn't hesitate. He doesn't question. He's just balanced all the way through his program. We've seen, what, now four clean programs from this young man. No, yeah. three, sorry. But uh, still, very, very solid, very consistent. That on me. That that amazing. Axel. So nice and, and easy. When he entered that tight, I thought, oh my goodness, he's only going to do double here because the approach was so relaxed and yet triple it was. That's what I thought as well. You know, there's some work to do with refinement and positions and whatnot and upper body and mm. choreography. But from a technical perspective, this young man is in his own. He knows where he is pretty much at all times. He doesn't deviate from that or take do different uh, takeoff positions. He's very, very consistent. 
And you can just see how he and holds his hands. You're going to want to work on some of those details, but wow. Great to see him have another great skate. Joined by his father this time. It was his sister that was with him in Linz, and now his, his father. And I remember after he'd won in Linz, he was saying to you, think, Ted, oh, what happens next? He said, well, I start school on Monday, and I thought yeah. how wonderfully humble and unassuming, you know, combining his school with his skating, being an international skating star, and still keeping up his studies. Yeah, that was true. He said, well, next I go to school. You know, <laughs> he had to juggle his schedules then. I look how proud his dad looked. That's yeah. wonderful. father on the coaching staff, sister on the coaching staff, and he actually has an eight-year-old brother who is also a skater as well, so definitely a, a family of skaters. Another skating family, that's for sure. Season's best, 74.94 mm. for Adam Hagara from Slovakia. That'll put him into first place. They look thrilled with that, so they should be. Three solid performances so far in this season very early on of course if you take a look at our next competitor from Canada David Howe is 16 years old Canada's national novice champion last season coached by Keegan and Eileen Murphy they relocated to Vancouver just getting used to that environment a new team of coaches and he'll skate the short program to Bella Chio. David Howes from Canada, and what an amazing contrast in the approach from Adam Hagara. This is the skater that I saw in warm-up, Ted, doing the back top to counter exercise with such great flow as his Canadian teammates cheer him on. And a you know, great program to the Money High soundtrack, really embracing the theme and performing brilliantly. He's got wonderful skating skills, very, very quick and agile. As we take a look at the triple Lutz, 
all the way around, stretches free lake. That looks really nice. Here's a little bit more of a problem with the triple toe loop. First one's okay. Second one loses some speed too far forward on the landing and then doesn't get all the way around in the second one. That's is a downgrade, in fact. But here's some of the skating skills you can see. There's a nice bracket up into the double axle. It showed some of this. It apparently gets the free leg back in time, but it does. Mm -hmm. And right into this uh, back camel. Some work to do in that area as well. But just the novice champion last season, moved up into junior. It's relocated, as I mentioned, just getting used to things. And here's some of his step sequence, how deep the edges are. Mm. He uses a huge range of levels and space around him. As we see it like that right there. Yeah. yeah. And may get the most difficult feature with the body movement and the step. That I think the feature least get. And a really good example there in the slow-mo of the use of the body movement for David in that choreography. Yeah, it's a really good start for the junior career for this young man. And Keegan's very good, at, as we've mentioned earlier, with all the coaches, or many of the coaches, working with the development of the person in connection with the development of the athlete. Mm -hmm. So patience is so important. Keegan's done a good job with that. And I, I'd read that David wanted to show that he can cope under the pressure of an international of this caliber. And I think, yes, the triple-triple was downgraded, but he's coped admirably well with that pressure to being able to look so in the moment. And even there, now in the kiss and cry, looks you know, very aware of what's going on and embracing it. Yeah, he had some challenges technically early on in the summertime, just getting used to things. 58.78 for David Howes, and that's fourth in the short program so far. Good job, for David and Keegan. And he's looking much more comfortable now, and I expect he'll continue to have a good season this year. Our next competitor represents Austria, 14-year-old Danielle Roos. First Junior Grand Prix season, second event, placing 18th in Linz, week number two. Coach by Neil Chesterson. 52.75, personal best in the short program. We'd like to top that score here right now.
Well, this 14-year-old Daniel Roos from Austria has struggled with a foot injury for a couple of years, and he worsened that during a fall on the loop in Linz at his first assignment on the series. And he didn't know until Sunday if he could skate in this event. So, although there were mistakes, showing great grit and strength to be able to perform under the pain of the injury. Yeah, you could see just on a lean in that takeoff, the timing of the pick was just off, and he had to bail out of that. And that could be due to the injury. Here's a nice triple soccer one loose in the air, and it doesn't get all the way around, but it rotated, and has to take the fall. The locks will get done, nice deep edges on that landing, ready to fly in and some fun choreography. I love the lean back. There's some good aspects, great stuff working, but just obviously the injury impacting upon his ability to deliver a clean skate. But coaching staff so behind him and explained that he goes to a special sport oriented school, giving him more support for his training. So the whole team, mindful, he's only 14 years old. There's the, you got it, Ted. Yeah, I, I knew when you started talking. Okay, just be patient, you're gonna see it. <laughs> yeah, no, these, these young skaters, when they get support like that, it may take them a little bit of time, but if you're passionate about this sport and you spend the time at it, you're going to improve. Maybe maybe in a different order than other people would want you to, or maybe in a different way, but it, it's mileage. You need mileage. Mm. There's so many things to learn in this sport. It simply takes time. And he hasn't been able to, to jump much between events, so that and other massive you know, learning curve, do I compete again? Do I choose to utilize the experience of going to Budapest and being around others, knowing that I'm not able perhaps to give as much as I could? And I admire he and his team for recognizing that although he's unlikely to be able to skate well here because of the preparation time that he's missed, but recognizing he will learn so, so much in his mind, even if his body's not yet physically comfortable to oh, deliver it. I completely agree. Uh, you know, it depends on the degree of the injury, but you kind of want to go in those these environments and learn. Watch your fellow competitors, get inspired by those that um, are better than you and what you have to do to close that gap. And you only get that experience and that inspiration by being here. No, that's not to say everybody should come in and skate injured. I'm not saying that at all. No. But if you can skate it and you're just not going to be at your top of the game, there's still things to be gained, that's for sure. 39.19 for Daniel Roos from Austria. That's ninth in the short program at this stage of the competition. Our next competitor represents Poland, 16-year-old Matvey Yefienko. Uh, First junior Grand Prix season. So he does not have personal best score yet. He'll earn one right now for the short. He'll skate to Beggin by Madcock.
Well, the first of a few skaters competing here that earn back-to-back -back assignments. Matvey Yevmenko from Poland will compete again in Gdansk next week. But what a good start to two very busy weeks for the 16-year-old. Yeah, I know. Skating back-to-back -back competitions, some people don't like that, but some people feel that it's the best way to learn in the game. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not that big. He doesn't, doesn't have to travel very far, so that's the good news. But, you know, whatever you do here, you either take that momentum, positive momentum into another competition, learn how to be consistent. And if you don't skate well, how to make corrections. There's the triple flip, triple toe loop. Nicely done. Good clearance on that landing all the way around. There's a back entry. You see that toe pointing up. You may want to turn that out. Small little detail. Not easy going from a sit to a back camel. You lose speed. It's just one of those difficult change of positions change combination has been in the level four but with the minus Joey so a bit of traveling there look at the hands hanging down a little bit you kind of want to bring those up but he does really nice triple lots here no problem here's some of the steps twizzle there you watch just the hands you can see how they just hang a little bit I mean, these are the refinement details that take time for moving a junior into a senior where, you know, what is the difference between junior and senior? Certainly speed and edges and whatnot, but every single position in the seniors has been choreographed and executed to the highest level. Generally in juniors, there's still some refinement to be done. And with working with Drota and Mariusz Szwidek, first Polish pair to win a medal in in 1999 and good to see them passing on their knowledge and wisdom now and uh, being yeah. acknowledged that's <laughs> very nice very classy well his score is 57.93 and that'll put that be currently in the fifth place but a good start and there is a look at your top five skaters so far in this event. And we have three groups still to come. But we're going to take a break during the ice resurfacing and play some videos. Mark, what's on the menu? Mm -hmm. So a chance to look at one of the first of the mic'd up CDs today. And we look back at Mikhail Brezina from his time in Osaka with his student last week. And then another excerpt from Osaka, an interview with the winner of the men's event, Francois Pito. And then finally, a uh, video from the day in the life of CDs, and it's a day with team leader, Mike Slipchuk from Team Canada. Perfect. We hope you enjoyed the videos. We'll be back right after this. Oh yeah, he did not hold back. <laughs> He did not hold back, I like that. Oh yeah, the computer's frozen. <laughs> Warm up just finished. Do you want me to stay over there and get you when, when like the third skater comes? Stay. No, stay. No matter what you're doing, just stay on your feet. And you'll be fine. You keep your body and you just use your legs to jump, use your arms to rotate, you'll be fine. You step into the jump around the corner, it's gonna kick you out. This is too much force. Everything's good. Stay soft. Yeah? Just use your knees. It's no different from any other competition. Yeah? It looks sharp. Just like your skating's gonna be, right? Let's go. Let's do this. All right, skate around, wait for your name, bend your knees, jump with your legs, and go for check. All right, let's do this. Come on. Get in. Check. Nice. Go ahead. Ready? Hold in. Oh, speed up, speed up. Lutz was super nice. Probably the best one I've seen from you in a while. Yeah? Yeah. All right. Good. Good start. Yeah. I like it.
I didn't feel pressure with uh, the success in Bangkok. I was just uh, happy with this silver medal in Bangkok and uh, just um, a very like um, go for it for the second Grand Prix and just take all the baggage I have and uh, to, to do good in this competition. So yeah, just uh, feel good and decontract. De <laughs> uh, my goal, it was to, to do my job of course, to do two uh, good programs. And uh, yeah, now I have the final, so I'm going to work for, for this event. Uh, my goal for the rest of the season is to work on quadruple jumps, um, to Grand Prix final, Junior, junior World, and um, yeah, to do a, a beautiful program, good competition, and to continue to work, to keep pushing and uh, like put quadruple in competition. I hope I can uh, qualify uh, myself to a European. So I'm gonna work and and uh, yeah, I hope I'm gonna I'm gonna skate to the European and uh, like some international competition um, to to win like some experience with the senior with the senior circuit. Ah yes, bye bye and thank you to my family and my coach Romain Ponsard and Angelica Bashkina <laughs> and all the crew here in Japan. Arigato kasaimas. We always want to make sure we have our team here to cheer them on. Hi, I'm Mike Slipacek from Skate Canada. I'm the High Performance Director of our program, but I'm also a, a team leader during the season, so I spend most of the season traveling with our, our teams and part of our support team uh, there to help with whatever they need help with during the season. When an event starts here with Canada, we have two team leaders and we have two medical people, and we can have two to three people down to the board. So our other team leader and our physio and doctor are down with the team right now, and I'm just gonna watch the pair event from up here and, and uh, just kind of See, see how they do and be able to provide any feedback or information that uh, the coaches might be looking for. So just uh, I can actually sit back and enjoy some skating for a while. Yeah, so we're, we're here for the, for the warm up and just here to make sure nothing goes wrong or uh, that the athlete, while they're on the ice, your coach don't need anything during the warm up. So just here to provide whatever support they need. And we usually just kind of stay invisible and stay away. <laughs> so. Come on. Ah. Who's on the axle? Yeah, too bad on the Lutz. Yeah. That's not a lot in competition. The Lutz? Yeah. It, I, it just goes on a, on a diagonal. Yeah. Like the pattern goes really awkward. Yeah. Yeah, it kind of comes, they can see it on the way in. It's like it's just kind of drifts out. Go up there. Okay. <laughs> you go. No, no, I don't go up there. We never go up there, just the athletes and the coaches. We stay out. Yeah. <laughs> Lee, what is it? 60. 60? Good. He hit foul? Yeah. He yeah, he did something I didn't see. He just had he turned to axle though? I didn't see that. So I was combo that much to me. I just heard it. I didn't see what happened. Good job. Good fight. I said he didn't make a step as long as Boston in the kiss and cry. That was good. The axle and the warm up was actually better. I know, I saw it. it was good. I, I thought, well, they've been better all day today. Yeah. Both, so. That's what I said. You just keep doing that when you go home. Like, yeah. Start landing. Yeah, I, honestly, when he goes in, I almost expect he's going to land it. Yeah. It looks good, so. <laughs> good start. Yeah. Good. All right, we're done. As long as the mom doesn't beat him now for missing the last. Yeah. <laughs>
Welcome back everyone to Budapest, Hungary. Week number five in the Junior Grand Prix. Group number three in the Men's Short Program on day one of competition. I'm your host Ed Barton along with Mark Hanready joining me from Nottingham. And Mark, <laughs> I just... I, I, I'm just... Right? I was just gonna say, Ted, I'm uh, excited. I'm looking forward to seeing this next group, but I'm also conscious to try not to peak too soon because as you said, We've got a long day Oh, of we, have, we do. And you know, it was interesting, <laughs> a little intel for you. Uh, I oh, know you are the intel king, no question. You're an <laughs> M MI5 lieutenant or something or other. You're very good. <clears throat> but I did manage to uh, see Adam Hagara. And he told oh, me, good. I said, congratulations, great skate. He said, thank you very much. He had a big smile on his face. He said, he broke his blades last week. Wow. So these are new blades for him to put them back on his boot. So, okay, it's not, oh. like, it's not like a new boot, but uh, there you go, my intel. Well done, well done, Ted. He's on it. Go out and hang out. What do you call it, stalking? Is that what you say? <laughs> <laughs> the, that, the choice of vocabulary that I initially used that I'm thinking needed to be, or I think you rightly acknowledged needed yes, to be addressing. It needs to be, exactly, that terminology. But anyways, I thought that was interesting information, but nevertheless, he, was a big, he had a big smile on his face and thrilled with another solid performance. Oh, good, good, good. And what I've noted, I don't know if it's the same for what you've heard in Canada, Ted, but I've been really aware that in Europe particularly that skaters have been struggling for the lead time to get new skates. It seems like it's taking much longer for skaters to get their hands on new skates for whatever reasons. And so that, you know, just an interesting concept because for some of these skaters, especially when they are growing and changing, some of them still feet might be growing, they may find themselves in the middle of a season wanting new skates or needing new skates, whereas that's different for seniors who are much more accustomed to a regular turnaround of boot breakdown. No, oh, it's a good point. Uh, yes, we have had the same problem in North America where there's been a delay of three, four, five months in some cases before you get your new boots. And so then you're strapping up your boots with tape and they're getting soggy and they're getting mushy. And uh, although they're probably more comfortable that way, they certainly don't give you the support that you need in a quad a jump or a triple axle and so you desperately need those new new boots and then when you do get the new boots if for any reason they're off a little bit it's just a nightmare equipment for this sport i i guess it's for a lot of sports but the equipment for this sport it is so important it's on your feet you got knives down there and they, if they're off that's dangerous so yeah um, you know when you cannot get those boots as quickly as you need them to have the proper amount of time to break them in because when they're, you first get them they're very stiff uh, very difficult to do all the jumps in takes about a week or so maybe more to get them to a really comfortable place and I think the skaters ideal and what will hopefully feel the case for these skaters at this point in the season is that the boot is an extension of their foot that they are totally comfortable and at one with every aspect of the boot and the blade so they feel really comfortable here you see you know, the triple flip, triple toe there, and being able to know, okay, my weight is a little forward on the toe pick, and knowing how to adjust that weight within the boot. Um, when that, when you have that new blocky boot, and you can't feel that connection with the ice, and you don't feel connected as one, oh, there's just, it's hideous. Especially when, you know, skating is our superpower, and when you feel like the boots and blades stop you having your superpower, it's not a fun game. No, it's true, and not only, they might, you might be able to jump in them and spin in them, but can you point the toes? Can you do the refinements and a stiff boot that you could do in a softer boot? So there is the aesthetic part of the sport as well, although those are small details. But the first the first point is get comfortable in them to jump and to spin, of course. Yeah. I prolong the acquisition of new boots and blades for as long as possible. And that's when I don't even really jump anymore. So yeah, I'm a bit of a wuss when it comes to new skates. Yeah. <laughs> well... Yeah, but you're you're not you're not a spring chicken anymore, right? So <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> much more uh, need to be delicately positioned on my skates. No, yeah, you're getting a little bit more picky as age creeps yeah. in there. I get it. And you skate and it's you, you skate on a pretty small surface for the uh, oh, so yeah for dancing on ice. So I just had confirmation that our two uh, Sola from Finland will not be competing. So oh, he is no. out of the competition because of the skates um, yeah. not arriving in time. He did try someone else's skates, 
could not, we just talked about that, could not adapt to that, and so has had to withdraw from this competition. Well, okay. It's so, so sad for, for the athlete, and big shout out to him. It's, it's interesting though, his coach, Artur's coach, Rina Varyokari, has a bachelor's degree in physiotherapy, and I thought, what an amazing coach to have on your side. Yeah. And her quote on Instagram was, do good, be dope. So I thought, he's obviously, in my head, he was in good hands, and it'll be, you know, the, the mindset of his coach, Rina, who will hopefully help him now to come to terms with the frustration that, you know, something out of your hands. Is, yeah, is for sure, problem. and at least it wasn't an injury. You know, this is okay, yeah. Yeah. this is an airplane mess up, right? So, and not much you can do about those. Thank God it's not an injury that lasts a little longer. And of course, skater number 21, Igor Martsenko from Estonia, he is planning to skate in Alexei uh, Vashenko's um, skates. Uh, Alexei oh. could not compete because he was ill. He is ill. And so he gave his skates to Yegor Martsenko. So we'll see how that goes. We'll see him on the final skater of group number four. And it, it looks like R2 is scheduled to compete in Poland as well. So hopefully oh, we'll get to see him next good. week. Yeah, hopefully. Well, there is the first competitor in group number three, men's short program day one competition on the Junior Grand Prix week number five. 14-year-old Grasvan Sionic. First Junior Grand Prix season, second event, coming 26th in Istanbul week three on the Junior Grand Prix. His personal best in the short program is 36.82. And he'll skate to Way Down We Go by Kittle. Razvan Tainak from Romania. We some already in Istanbul. And his coach explained to Simona that he's made this jump up to juniors, wanted to exploit the fact that there aren't other Romanian junior men to use this 
is a real training opportunity and you can see the care this coach has for his student as he leaves the ice. Champion of the men's event, Rio. He struggled with that Sako in the war. That was much better there. Yeah. It, just the basic skating skills are a little, you know, a little early on in the development stages. Mm. And so it doesn't allow him enough speed, and confidence. There's the double axle, hand goes down. But he mechanics of that was pretty good. And looking at the amount of time that they have to train is 12 hours a week in the high season. So that's not a lot of time compared to some skaters. And I chatted to Simona when we were in Istanbul and the aspirations that she has for her skaters to elevate Romanian skating is just so exciting. And you can see a coach that was invested, hungry, eager to take these skaters to a high elite level. And she acknowledged that, you know, this was a big jump for Razvan to take to compete on the Junior Grand Prix but so mindful of what it could offer him. So she will make this experience nothing but positives, even if the score at this stage finds him in one of the lower groups, even if, you know, if one of the lower skaters, she's so mindful and aware of, no, but this is going to allow you to have the success that we all dream and aspire to have. Yeah, absolutely. You have to start a movement, if you will. You know, and yeah. it has to be a positive experience, even if the skating is not at the strongest level. People want to continue it. They see that it's fun to do. The younger skaters come in, some talented one comes up quickly, and then you've got a momentum. But it takes time, patience, and a huge amount of dedication. Mm. And, and coach. Yeah, and the kind of the, the vision, you know, like you say, the vision, the belief and the desire to have that vision and indulge in it. And to be honest, that in itself gives them both something really exciting to get, you know, motivated to go into the rink for. If there's not a goal, then it's a little bit less, well, it's a lot less challenge, lot less easy to push yourself through the physical exhaustion if you don't have a vision for you know, the end goal. Oh, absolutely. You want to measure yourself along the way, of course. The score is 36.70 for Rasvan from Romania. That's 11th in the short program at this stage of the competition. Well, our next competitor comes from the United States, 16-year-old Jacob Sanchez, second Junior Grand Prix season, second event, coming fourth in Bangkok, just off the podium. Also, the U.S. National Junior Silver Medalist, 77.69, personal best from Bangkok. He will be trying the triple axle according to this program sheet. We'll see if it materializes as he will skate. Just singing in the rain.
16-year-old Jacob Sanchez from the United States of America. And interestingly, Ted, Jacob had the highest short program score on the series so far. He won the short program in his first assignment in Thailand, Bangkok. And two weeks ago in New York City, he's posted over 80 points in the short program. So a skater obviously so very capable, but just that oh, freak fall in the triple axle landing would we'll just see it, you know. Yeah, you can see just well, hits the back of his heel on that landing, goes down and then let that bother him a little bit throughout the program. This Lutz all the way, beautifully done, nice and clean and solid. And there's the another look at that. And good soft knees on the landing. Here's a I grab these steps coming into the jump combination, which are beautiful, incredible. And this is what adds the quality. But unfortunately, the flip gets all the way down around, and then the toe loop does not and has to take the fall. Really unexpected because this is a very, very fine skater as we take a look at the flying sit spin in level three, so missing one feature off of that. Really good skater. This will be a disappointing skate for him, particularly having those high scores yeah. on the Junior Grand Prix and in New York. Yeah, and, you know, knowing that he has the highest scores is joined by Oleg Makarov, his coach, who was the Olympic bronze medalist in pairs back in 1984. Knowing that he had the fourth in Bangkok, knowing he had the highest score in the series in the short program so far, he may, I'm sure, have been aspiring to get the possible win here and maybe sneak into the Junior Grand Prix final. But what's amazing is the reaction to the mistakes now. Still smiling, respect that. Yeah, I know he's, I think he's confident. He's a good skater, he knows it, he can control the things those were a little odd mistakes that he made in this short program, a little disappointing, but it's not as if they're big mistakes. Well, on this day, yes, but I don't think you'd see that very often from this young man. He's pretty consistent, as we've seen in the scores so far this season. He's so strong. An ambassador for the Diversity Ice Foundation, helping to spread diversity in figure skating. So not just a great skater, but one that's you know, eager to promote others as well so what, what a guy yeah it's amazing when you when we get to know these skaters a little bit more and learn a little bit more about their life how many other activities and things they're involved in which really rounds their humanity out to a certain degree I mean we look at yeah. them as just as skaters but they're much much more than that some of them or most of them are also excellent students Let's take a look yeah. at the score. 77.69 was his personal best this season. He will fall far short of that, of course, with a mistake. 65.15. You can see him nod his head, goes, yep, I get it. I know what I did wrong. That'll put Jacob currently in fourth place. <laughs> Down to earth, young man. But we'll see a great Jake, Jacob Sanchez in the free program, I'm pretty sure. Now there will be a minute while they wait I have to go through this process because the skater from Finland, Archer Yusola, his skates did not arrive, and he chose he cannot skate in someone else's skates. But because the formal process of withdrawing did not happen, they have to call his name and go through a process here and wait for about a minute or so before our next skater will take to the ice for their performance. And you just hope that they do get their skates back at some point. Yeah, hopefully we'll see Artu compete in Gdansk again. And Artu's got an amazing stat. He's got a, a video on social media that's had over 9 million views showing a double style double toe in 2016 that became a triple style triple toe by 2021. So if you haven't seen that, check it out. <laughs> How many million? What? N Nine million views on this video that he's made showing the amazing strides that he made in five years from double circle, double toe to triple circle, triple toe. Nine really cool. million views. Wow. Yeah. That is amazing. <laughs> okay. Our next competitor represents Turkey. Frickin Amir Insal, 16 years old, first junior Grand Prix season, second event this year, 16th in Istanbul. 49.6 for personal best in the short program.
Kurkan Emre Insa, we saw him two weeks in Istanbul enjoying those amazing audiences that supported him so well. But interesting to see, Ted, that he has changed the, the structure of the short program. A couple of weeks ago, he had saved the triplets to later on here, opening with it there. It was a successful ploy, I think. Yeah, most of these skaters that we've witnessed so far has have changed their planned program sheet by mm. quite a bit. You can't really follow yeah. it as we see the triple flip, triple toe loop, under rotate, downgraded. In fact, I think. And the double axle. In the back camel, not too bad. You use a little bit more flexibility in that hip. Get the leg up a little higher. Keeps himself centered. Grabs the leg. Very difficult. T takes arm strength and back flexibility for that position. And you can see there the leg is a little lower than the hip. Ooh. But it is a change, com change camel spin level four. So yeah. Tech panel deeming it justifiable, but you can see the tightness in the quad muscles, and that just takes endless stretching and lengthening to facilitate those better shapes. But And you were in Istanbul and seen the enthusiasm in that facility. Uh, they've yeah. got a good skating community supporting each other. Yeah, and I was thinking that it'd be interesting to see how it, my notes were, would it have been hard to come down from that for Furkan, Emre, and Kyle? Because it was so electric, the support, and great to see that in the two weeks since that event, he's obviously gone back, he's considered the approach, and now it looks like from 49.64 in Istanbul two weeks ago that he's going to you know, maybe put up to five points on top of that. So I worried that it'd be hard to come back from that elation of being in front of a home audience, and it doesn't seem to be the case at all. Seems like it's elevated and inspired him as he taps his Turkish flag in his jacket. Well, act you know, absolutely. I think that when you have an environment like that, you get motivated to get even better because you know you have all those people at home supporting you. So it yeah. pushes you. When you don't compete at home, then you're always kind of like the visitor, if you will. So you don't yeah. really hear that support. But when you're there at home, you hear the support, you see the support, and then you want to um, you want to skate for them as well. As we take a look mm. at the scores, the Furkan season's best, 54.13. And that'll put him currently into seventh place. They look pretty happy with that score. Big improvement from Istanbul. Well done. Great to see the Turkish skaters continue to mm. grow and, and the community as well. Well, there is our next competitor representing Georgia, 15-year-old Konstantin Subatishvili. He's coached by Kirill Davidenko. 61.28 personal best in the short. And he'll skate to Gravity of Love.
Konstantina Supatashvili from Georgia. A skater not using triple axel again, but demonstrating a consistency that served him so well just off the podium in Istanbul. And again here, three for three in regards to clean skates for the young 15-year-old. Yeah, really solid uh, posture and strong back, good use of the arms as well. So the basic technique is there, the basic foundation is there for jumping and for spinning, of course, but you know, still some work to do in connection with the music and whatnot, as with most of the juniors. Axel looks like it's ready to be a triple soon. Yeah, no question. Nice soft knees on the takeoff and on the landing. And here's the triple Lutz. Straight up and straight down. A little bit forward, so loses a little bit of speed on the landing, but not really a big deal at this stage. And here's the triple flip. Watch him take the time. Pushes himself way up into the air. Gets all the way around. Gets free leg back. Takes sometimes the patience to give yourself enough time between the uh, after the first jump to reload to get the second jump high. And just seemingly a really good example of somebody that's well trained and well ready. You can see the spin, although they're in slow mo, not as fast as some we might see. The triple triple, not with the same running edge as some we might see. But a skater that is delivering exactly what they're capable of. We've seen Jacob Sanchez with the ability to deliver much more, but just not managing to do it under the pressure of the competition. At this stage, Constantine delivering consistency. Yeah, nice job. You can see the skater's being built really well. Great foundation, uh, good posture, strong body core, good technique. As he adds speed, which he'll need to do for sure, and as he adds a bit more choreography, which he'll need to do, then he'll start to really grow into what he can be as a skater and, reach the podium as opposed to close to the podium. Let's take a look at the short program scores for Constantine. 58.05 and that'll put Constantine Supertashvili of Georgia currently in the sixth place. Four takes to the ice for the warm up. That was a short and sweet last group just for the four competitors. Yeah. And there is the start order for this group. And we'll see whether Yegor Martsenko, now he will be skating in the boots of Alexei Lyshenko from Hungary. He's so generously given him his boots, he's, he's ill and he cannot compete. What great sportsmanship. I think I, I remember he, I think in Riga last year when I was in Riga, the same kind of scenario took place for by skaters. Remember there's a skater within the same event. It was the British skater who lent another skater in his group his skates and a different skater within the, the competition lent their costume. And I just think stories like that warm my heart to hear of camaraderie sportsmanship across nations, you know, it's fast, fabulous. Yeah, I think, you know, the, the men have been very, very generous that way. They don't, I should make it a general statement, they don't see each other as, you know, their fierce competitor. Um, mm. They are in the same competition and they do their thing and they see where it ends up. And so they have certainly demonstrated the willingness and ability to be generous and kind to fellow competitors going through a stressful time. So. That's so wonderful to see at this age, because that'll just carry through, hopefully, for the rest of their lives. That's, that's the wonderful, that's why, you know, sometimes we feel for skating parents, we often feel for skating parents, it's an expensive sport, it's high, you know, very intense, that can consume lives. But then when you hear stories like that about the life lessons that it gives your child, you just think, oh, well, that's truly well, but the parent, But the parents, Mark, are going, Okay, I want life lessons for my child, no question, and I'm happy the sport gives it, but I don't want to pay that much money. <laughs> yeah, it. is that what it costs? Yeah, for yeah life exactly. Lesson? For life lesson. Well, it comes in funny ways. <laughs> you, and a lot of those life lessons come through failures, you know, where you mm -hmm. are learning to cope and deal with uh, stressful times. Yeah. 
I was thinking, Ted, for Yegor Marcenko, skating in somebody else's skates, this is where I could not be a judge because to me, I think he has 10 points on the scoreboard before he even starts. I think you yeah, deserve. Not sure that's legal, but anyways. No, I don't think that'll work. <laughs> Mark, why is your high, why is your score so high? You're suspended. <laughs> the guy's in his it's somebody else's skates. He yeah. deserves all the points. Well, they'd all be changing skates at that point. For yeah. 10 points, right? Yeah. Let's all change, guys. Let's all do a changing room swap. Who's got the same feet size? Well, they, at this stage and age, they're so different. Look at this young man, just growing, mm. starting to grow, and some have grown, and so they're certainly at different stages of development. Eduardo Luigi Profesa from Italy and a relatively simple jump content but what he's going to learn here will be exponential. I yeah, I love seeing the Federation send out their young skaters that they mm. know that are not at the level to compete at, in the top five at this point but they're investing in them long term and let's get them out, get them experience, and give them a couple of experiences. They have to earn the rest of the experiences by doing their best work, and if they do that, that's okay. We'll send them out again. But get them out on the circuit and uh, let them experience going up against skaters that are older, uh, maybe have more facilities, who knows, because that's where you get inspired, and that's where you learn where you stand in a group such as this. Mm. There really is a, uh, I don't quite know, it's, it's kind of the energy around a skater in training when they've had an experience like this. A, a sense um, when ever I've, I've been in an environment where I've seen a skater that has had an international of a fairly high caliber and you just sense there's a different resonance with their training. They, they get it. And I certainly I noticed that in the UK with skaters that aren't, you know, it's not a hugely competitive skating nation. And then when I see those that I know have gone abroad, I think, oh, you get it now. You really understand and a I, bit more of the and game. I, and I think, you know, once you've worn your flag or you've worn your team uniform, you feel something different. You feel this mm. pride and, and this desire to represent your country, your country in the highest way. And so that simply just gives you another source of inspiration. And then when they come back mm. to train, you see them training at a higher level, which helps the rest of the environment. So being an international I, skater at the junior level and then moving into senior has great value past the value of that one skater. When they come home and the rest of the skaters are with them, they'll be inspired as well. And it then transcends more almost, no, I don't want to say business side, but there's certainly a more professional approach or it gives them a structured focus. And you want to maintain the joy and the blissful ignorance of what it is, just their hobby that they love. But equally, if they can maintain that joy, but then with that you know, I like that methodical phrase. approach. I like that phrase, blissful innocence. Mm, yeah. <laughs> oh um, far removed from that now. <laughs> yeah. Yes, we are. We're in the last minute of the warm-up. And you see, now now the young men start to spin, right? <laughs> they jump. Yeah, yeah. Minutes, oh, yeah. And then they're going to go, oh, OK, I better do a spin. Better warm one up. Little quads and hamstring stretch, try and get those cat holes counted. It takes so much work off ice just to develop the flexibility. You cannot do that just by skating. You don't, I mean, and, and if you're born with flexibility, but even if you're born with flexibility, you have to keep it going while you grow. Yeah. And so that yes. is off ice. You know? It's how you sit and how you stretch off ice at home, perhaps, because it doesn't it just happen by skating. Yeah. And there we look at the next competitor getting final words of instruction and encouragement from Katarina Berja. 17-year-old David Sedej from Slovenia, second Junior Grand Prix season. He was 30th at the World Juniors, 29th at the European Championships last season. Personal best 55.62, earning that at the World Juniors. You'll skate the short program to the question of you by Prince.
Well, I congratulate the 17 year olds from Slovenia, David Sade, who stayed committed to the choreography and the composition of the program, despite what I'm sure was the frustration of the popped triple loops into single. Yeah, just unfortunately jabbed the pick in a little bit too early. He didn't put that pick in on the way up. Nice double axle, rides the edge a little bit on the landing. Let's see what happens here. And he'll put this pick in just too early right there. And the upper body was not, they were not lifting all together at the same time. So let's pop that into a single. And there's the triple flip, has to do a three turn, a little bit too far back on the landing. Does a three turn, keeps the free leg off the ice, gets into the double toes, sort of saves that combination. Positions are just difficult for the young man. It's been traveled quite a bit, so it's a change combination. It's been level four, but has a minus GOE of 0.53. So got all the difficulty, but then was downgraded a little bit because of the quality was not strong. So, you know, what do you do? Do you go for the difficult in lesser quality, or do you go for simpler spin yeah. with better, better quality? It's a strategy that the coach and the skater work on. Uh, as they approach the year. Yeah, and his coach, Katarina Berger, had explained that they collaborate with the ISU, the International Skating Union Center of Excellence in Bergamo, and indeed, in August, they hosted a development camp in Slovenia, but they had major floods at the time, and they had to cancel the camp after the fourth day, and it, it's a shame that that happened, but what it says to me is that Katarina, the Slovenian Federation, and the ISU are working hard to support the likes of David and the coaches because they have the aspiration, like we've talked about, the aspiration to create homegrown world-class skaters. And David is that, not the skate that he wanted today, but he's in an environment there where they, they're encouraging. Yeah, no, I've been to Slovenia a number of times for that competition as we take a look at the scores for David, 46.45, and that'll put him into 13th place at this stage of the competition. And they're doing a really good job in Slovenia trying to get the type of exposure and experience needed to move these young skaters, these athletes, into a higher level. Well, next up, 13-year-old Eduardo Luigi Perfazer from Italy. First Junior Grand Prix event. Boy, just 13. And he's going to skate the short program to walk to school.
<laughs> That's the reaction that we've been hoping for of all the competitors so far. 13-year-old Eduardo Luigi Profeza. Fascinatingly, Ted, this is skater who's any other international competition experience comes previously as an ice dancer when he competed in the novice ice dance competition with partner Ilaria Pagliarini and now that the basis and foundation for him now to be a budding single skater with good technique. Oh, there's the triple toe loop. Gets the feeling back in time up into the double toe loop. Well done. I try to capture, you can see some of his feeling coming out in his skating. His double lutz, that's the stage of development this young man is at. Triple toe, double toe, double lutz, double axle. If you watch here, look at the upper body movement here. You can see him reaching out into space, not just staying upright, using all the different levels, and using the head as well. And this is really a good sign for such a young skater. Work to do technically, but you can see the mechanics are there. And also, he's got some skateability and some performance. Here's the double axle setting this up. This stepped outside a little bit. Watch the takeoff edge. He goes upper body, goes outside, and the Skating foot goes to the other side, so he doesn't go up straight. But I like his sensitivity to the music. Early stages, no question, but it's there. And isn't it rare to hear somebody who's competed as an ice dancer and then as a single skater, but we don't normally think of that as conventional nor, you know, maybe optimal, but in this instance, it seems to have a facility that are allowed to flourish that performance ability and now in a coach like Christina Maori who was coached to Valentina Marquet for years, coached to great Italian Paris champions, she will allow him to have the technique as a single skater as well, so bright future. Yeah. And you can see that connection, he has a smile on his face. There's the 43.84 for Eduardo, that's 14th. He seems pretty happy with that. It's got some very nice qualities, still everything under development, under construction, but this is only going to get better in time. But he has this feeling for the music, and that's so nice to have this early stage. Our next competitor represents Bulgaria, Jonas Apostolou, 13 years old. This is his first Junior Grand Prix event. Another skater just fresh out of novice, perhaps. And as maybe he feels, he'll skate to This Is The Life.
Another 13-year-old, back-to-back 13-year-old skating here. Ioannis Apostolou from Bulgaria and showcasing Ted. <sighs> Maybe it's just experience now in his second Junior Grand Prix assignment or it's the education that the first event offered because huge improvement in the score likely to be shown here. Yeah, well, you never know whether it was just an unfortunate skate in the first time out or there's been a lot of gain from then to now, but the important thing is there has been the gain. That's a little under rotated, yeah. but mechanics are good. Actually, in the system, it's clean. We're just looking at it now, I think. No, it's under rotated. But nice camo. I took this because I thought the camo Better position one. was good. Yeah. And the back camo had to hop around, hang on, and he did. Keeps himself balanced here. But he had pretty good hip flexibility. We've been talking about that in the juniors. I want to show more difference yeah. between the ones that have it, the ones that don't. Double axle, clean on all the way around. But look at the hands and the arm and the head. A little bit down, some work to do in that upper body posture, but nevertheless, well done here in the second junior Grand Prix. Yes, and it's interesting. You can almost sense that approach, the mental approach. In terms of technical score, levels up on the last experience, rotation improved, so the technical score would 16.92 at the last event, now looking like it's going to jump seismically. The next stage, I think, the later thing to be embraced, perhaps, by Ioannis will be the program component score, the skating skills, presentation, and composition. Yeah, and that's always the hard sell. <laughs> <We're talking laughs> yeah, yeah. that with the juniors, they want to jump, and so we have to approve the program components, and they'll go, well, what are those? How <laughs> yeah. many, and how many points do I get for them? Uh -huh. Where well, you can correlate the points, that yeah. kind of clicks a little. <laughs> yeah, it's a little harder to explain, but anyways, it takes years to sort of get them into that. Once they start doing all their jumps and still having scores that aren't very, you know, not exactly what they want, then they start looking at, mm, what else do I have to do now? Oh, yeah, you told me that five years ago. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's just kids. That's the way I was, too. Mm. I'm sure the way you were. Were you? Or yeah. were you a perfect child? No, I just were you a perfect child? And I, I just love to jump. Just wanted to jump. Jump, 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 jump. As it says the ice dancer. Season's, <laughs> best, <laughs> yeah. season, season's best at 42.46. And that put Jonas currently in the 15th place. Our next competitor represents Andorra. 15-year-old Raul Garcia Shibinskaya, second Junior Grand Prix season, second event, placing 19th in Linz, week two on the Junior Grand Prix. 46.61, personal best. He'll skate, singing in the rain.
Raul Garcia Eshevinskaya, the 15 year old representing Andorra, and he said to me, Ted, that how proud he was. It's a small country of 80,000. And he said that in the 20 years, no one in Andorra has been able to achieve great results in men's skating, and he's so proud to train with a former skater, Daniel Panado, and hopes to progress to high level and recognize Andorran skating around the world. Not today, but very ambitious. You know, we see the double oxen here. Just a little rough landings. This is just climbing the details as he prepares for triple salco. And that's too far back on the heel. Hard fall on the shoulder there. And a little bit later in the program, down the eighth double lutz on a big lean that sort of handles it. But you notice I uh, took the spin near the end of the program here, spinning on the toe picks. So you can hear this scraping of the toe picks. Here's a beautiful spread eagle. Wonderfully done. And you want to learn to skate on the sweet part of the blade. Stay away from the toe picks because they'll just slow you down, unless you're going to use them to jump. But you want to sort of skate in that sweet part of the blade so you can just have running edges. And here, you can see he's quite far in the toe picks, slowing it down a little bit. There's a little bit of snow down there. Those are just quality items that will get improved on and fixed throughout the season. And as you said, Ted, when you can find that sweet spot in the blade, then the speed of rotation increases, the excess rotation then consequently improves, and the, fa the consequence is higher grade of execution, more tech score. So not quite as visible, evident, or as valuable as maybe getting turning that double loops into triple loops, but still there is a, a tangible, very real benefit from having level fours with plus threes and plus fours. Well, I think could use that David Howes from Canada as an example. He doesn't have yeah. the triple axle and all that kind of stuff, but the quality of skating is such a high level. I think he is sitting at 58 points. And yeah, he did triple lutz and triple flip, but you know those were not the, the stars of the program. The skating skills certainly were. And again, that just takes a focus by the coaches and by the arena on skating skills. And of course, skaters don't want to spend time on that, you know? <laughs> but you gotta, you wanna compete, you're gonna need them. Mm -hmm. 42.10 for Raul Garcia, Shipinskaya of Andorra, 16th after the short, in the short program at this stage of the competition. Well, our next skater does plan a triple axle in the short program. We'll see whether that materializes. 18-year-old Matteo Navoni from Italy, third junior Grand Prix season, first event this year, and is the Italian junior champion, 61.18 personal best two years ago in 2021 on the junior Grand Prix. He'll skate to O in paradise at Coldplay.
18 year old Matteo Nalbon, born in Milan. Just one of those skates, Ted, that you can see the reaction. He's forced to take his bow, he's doing his due diligence. But right now, I'm sure he just wants to start again and deliver that skate once more. Yeah, you know, he had cause to lose his heart during the performance, but in the step sequence, he kept his energy going, which was great. Didn't jump well this time. You can see the lean on the takeoff, but it keeps on his feet at least on the landing of that. And here, triple flip gets all the way around that. Triple toe loop gets that done, so nice comeback. But this Lutz here just jabs the pick in way too early, and boom, it's in, and he's not ready to fold into rotation. Then he gets a little bit upset and not upset pardon me distracted if you will and just does not get in that camel spin balanced has to come out of that loses that spin in as a zero so wow a lot of points lost in about 10 seconds yeah and that shows the mental aspect of the support that blip and concentration can you know the camel spin, the change camel spin is about three points depending upon what level he would have achieved and so that's three points which could be three places and you can see even just there at the end the suggestion that wasn't in the optimal brain space as he's joined by Elisa Mikansari. <laughs> oh good for her, it's just sort of, yes. yeah it's okay, I mean it's, it's okay, it's, that's going to happen, it's what we do now, after that. You need sometimes those performances that teach you that you can't take anything for granted. You have to be well prepared, in good shape, and you gotta use your brain and be in that zone. And that's a hard thing to find consistently. 51.91 for Matteo Nabon from Italy. That's 11th in the short program, at least at this stage of the competition. Our final competitor in this group is skating on someone else's skates. Alexei Vlashenko of Hungary, 17-year-old Jäger Martsenko of Estonia. First junior grand prix season, but second event. 55.58, his personal best, but 42.71, season's best. Skating to Keeping Me Alive by Jonathan Roy.
an inspiring skate by Yegor Martsenko from Estonia. And this test should be used as a reference for any skater in training that complains about equipment because he's just delivered an improvement on his first Junior Grand Prix in somebody else's skate that he's only had a day to get accustomed to. Yeah, and although, let's say, Lashenko could not skate in this competition, his skates could. <laughs> yes. So it's, that's no prize, I suppose, but what a nice, generous effort by Alexei Vilashenko of Hungary giving the skates to this young man who did a great job, really. And you saw him stumble a little bit at the beginning of the program, yeah. just getting used to it, you know? It's interesting, Dick, because I remember watching Yegor competing in Istanbul and thinking that he seemed like in his head in the short program, he missed, he popped his loots there, at least here, he went for it. See with the fall, but then that impacted on the flying sit spin in Istanbul. But here, there it is, there's that flying sit spin, almost like he had to be so focused and so mentally on point because he was wearing somebody else's skate, so he didn't have a split second of chance to be distracted. Well, that flying sit spin takeoff is difficult in your own skates, let alone someone yeah. else's, because that takeoff edge is like an axle, it can just step away from you. Did a good job to keep control on that. So, 42, two weeks ago, with a skate that he came off the ice looking so crestfallen over. Now, here, new skates, and looking like he's gonna add maybe eight points to that. So. I hope I hope he gives those skates back to left side, because... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. His personal best is 55, season's best is 42, so... He'll be somewhere there in the middle. But nevertheless, unusual circumstances, challenging circumstances, and he comes through with a pretty good skate. You know, lessons are learned in situations such as a season's best 49.75. That'll put Yegor Martsenko from Estonia currently into 13th place. Has to be happy, unhappy that he didn't get his own skates, but he has to be happy that yeah. he competed and did so well. 100%. Wonder if the new ones will arrive before the free skate, and then I don't know. <laughs> That's a good question. Now I got to adapt to go back to the other ones. So <laughs> now, Mark, as we are going to go for an ice resurfacing, we have another set of videos to play back for you as we take a look at the standings so far. Adam Hagara of Slovakia still in first place, the clean skate, and Hun Yun Kim of Korea in second place. As we look at the rest of the field, what's on tap for the video playback? during the ice reserve team, Mark. Well, while we're watching the men's event, we get the chance to look back at the men's winner of the very first event of the Junior Grand Prix, Ryo Nakata from Japan, an interview following his win in Thailand. Then, the next of the mic'd up series, this time with another men's champion, Victor Pfeiffer from Linz. And then finally, to the winner of Istanbul, the Korean skater, Mikusio. Okay, we'll take a short break. And we'll be back right after this. Here in Bangkok, Thailand with the champion of the men's event, Ryo Nakata of Japan. What a great opening, a beautiful quad toe and a triple axle after that. How did you feel? I felt so happy and it was a little bit relief because I landed the quad and the axle. A little bit later in the program, you made a couple small mistakes, but you held it together. Did you think at the end of that program that you had a chance to win the event? Because I land my quad and my trip box, so I saw a little bit, maybe I can win, but because I had little mistakes, maybe second or first. It was a great program, and I know there's area to work on. What will you do between now and your next Junior Grand Prix? What would you like to improve on? I want to improve on my, my stamina. What's your ultimate goal in skating? Obviously, would be the Olympic Games at some point, right? Of course, you had many great Japanese skaters to, that you can, uh, you know, look at and be inspired by. Um, who's your favorite Japanese skater? Sho Maruno. Well, that's a good one. That's for sure. Do you ever get to train with him? Not, not that much, but sometimes in the national training center, I practice with him. Well, you're a beautiful skater, very successful event here at Bangkok. We wish you the best of luck. Do you know where you will be going next? Istanbul. Wonderful. Well, good luck, and we look forward to seeing you again on the Junior Grand Prix. The champion here in Bangkok, 
Thailand for the very first time an ICU event held here and the champion, the men's champion, Rio Nakata. <laughs> Huh? Are you Mike Dunbar? No. Uh -oh. You're still safe. No, I am Mike up. You can say hi to our friends. Don't say it now. <laughs> You're now being recorded. 11.47. No, one more minute. One minute. Don't do it yet. I would always love to watch skaters in, on TV. And then I would always turn it on in the locker room at Worlds and stuff, on Eurosport, and they would just turn it off. And I would keep turning it. Did I tell you that yet? Do you like watching? Uh, sort of. Yeah. Sort of. A little bit. And then just stop and focus. Well, I'll have to go down and tell Thomas that it's not six minutes warm up, <laughs> correct his grammar. <laughs> and then the click hops with the uh, check. Yeah, thank you. I love yours too. Yeah. And then every time you hold the landing position, breathe out, relax, reset. You can do that. And keep attacking, enjoy it. Free of concern, that's it. Yeah. A little bit of breathless event. Just in a controlled way, I love it. And do a beautiful landing position. Yes. Yes. Point, 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 finish it up. Make sure it's more than eight, nine, ten. So count to 30. No, I was just watching you in practice and I was like, that's a man who loves his job. Yeah, I know, I get a little or, into it when they skate though, I kind of move. A little bit? <laughs> I still sometimes have more faith in my students skating than my own. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good thing or not. Breathe out, relax after your elements. Okay. Right. I'll see you down there. Okay. It was funny when the little kids were plugging the holes in the middle of the rink. And like, I don't, I don't, I don't think people do lutzes and flips there. <laughs> Now it's perfect and confident yeah. and a sassy person. Person, sassy buddy. Exactly. But fight. Sassy person. That was a good save. Keeping it PG. Light call up. You got it. Good. Held it. <laughs> you did more than six on the count. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you. So Thank you. Great. Nice performance. Great save on the flying set, actually. Yes. Oh, this way? <laughs> Come on. <It's> <laughs> So close to 70. That's good, it's a personal best. Yeah, that is a personal best. You know what it is? This is way too high. <laughs> right? I so. Like, I, I look like a toddler sitting here. Chuka Amnida, thank you. Congratulations on a fantastic skate. How are you feeling? Good. Ah, oh, it's okay. good. Yeah. It's good. So you and you've got your English as well. <laughs> <laughs> and so we didn't see the triple axel in Bangkok. And this is this the first time that you've landed triple axel in competition? Oh, yes. this time, the first You've competed twice on the Junior Grand Prix. Does he have a rest? Does he have a little break now, or straight back to training? Congratulations, your skating is incredible. We wish you all the best of success for the rest of the season. Thank you! Thank you. <laughs>